Hello fellow coders, this is Pavel with a C++ exercise from the book uh, Starting out with C++ from control structures through uh, objects. This one is uh, from chapter 4, uh, exercise 2, called the Roman numerals converter. And we will write a program that asks the user to enter a number within the range 1 through 10. And we will use a switch statement to display the uh, Roman numeral version of the number. And we have a little input validation. We do not accept numbers less than 1 and more than 10. So this will be fairly straightforward. Um, I'm using Visual Studio. Uh, if you don't, you don't need this uh, include statement here. That's just for the Visual Studio. But we will need to include uh, our IO stream because we will be asking the user for the input and I'm going to also do uh, using namespace the standard namespace std so first thing we need a, a variable that will hold the number that the user enters so I'll just create an integer called number and then now we can ask the user to uh, Please enter a number from 1 to 10 and I will convert it to Roman numeral. There you go, just like that. So once the user enters the number, we will store it in the integer called number that we declared up here. All right, so that's the basic input and now when we have the number we can simply determine what the, the Roman numeral for that number is and we are supposed to use a switch statement now I will also later show you how to use uh, a different way to do this exercise using an array uh, if you this is from chapter 4 in that book if you follow in it and you're on chapter 4 then you don't know anything about arrays but um, you will see a different way how to do it and uh, probably an easier actually way once you understand arrays of course uh, anyway so let's start with the switch statement first so switch and we are checking the or the, the cases that we are going to do are based on the number user enters so our case will be for the number now we're not uh, remember the input validation we're not supposed to get uh, numbers uh, that are less than one and more than ten and we could uh, all wrap all these into an if statement if number is great less than uh, uh, one you know and then have an else statement on the bottom that's uh, I would catch uh, you know uh, like the uh, the rest of the conditions but uh, we don't need to do that here because switch statement has a default case which basically captures any values other than listed in the cases so if we'll have 10 cases from 1 to 10 then the default will capture anything that is not 1 through 10 so we don't need any other if statement to validate the input not in this case so we have our switch so our case one in other words if the number the user enters equals one then we can see out the roman numeral which would be actually i and break now if the user entered number two remember these cases are based on this number it's all the same number the integer number that we declared is the one that we store the user input and now we check in what that input is and based on what it is we are outputting our our case our, we are outputting the roman numeral so if the user entered uh, number two then we will see out and we will see out two and of course we will break now I will copy paste this case because they're gonna be similar so I'll just copy that's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 
9, and 10. So here's our case 3, here's our case 4, oh, that's 5, of course, I'm in mean 4, uh, which is vi and 5, which is v. Good thing we had Rocky because otherwise I wouldn't even know the Rocky 5 is Rocky V. And if you watch Simpsons, then you know that was actually a Simpsons reference. Anyway, let's do it. 7, 8, that's gonna be V and 3 eyes, 9, and that's gonna be I and X, and finally. Let me just scroll up so you can see we have 10 and that's just X. So these are our cases. Now, now we get the default and the default basically is, like I said, any other case that is not 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. If it's not one of those, then we get a default. So it's, uh, that's our basic uh, uh, input validation in a way and we can simply see out something like you entered incorrect number there you go and that's our case statement that's really all there is to it and uh, let me just build it and run it And, uh, and I'll run it. It's my uh, screen. So if I enter it, let's say eight, I get V I I I, which is eight. Now there's no spaces there. Uh, I wanna probably separate it. What we could do is come to each of these cases and add an end line, something like uh, I would come over here and then add end line and we could do it with all of these but we're programmers now so uh, we're lazy we don't do it that way we do it as little as possible all of these will take an end line so why should I do it 10 times actually 11 with the default as well when I can go after the switch statement and simply do one of them just see out end line so when I run it now, then we have our eight and now we have our eight and the end line in other words means go into the next line. So that's, uh, let's test some corner cases. Like let's say we get zero, we should get the error message. Yeah, you entered incorrect number. If I get uh 11 i should be in, uh yep incorrect number but if i get uh one that we get the i which is one with the roman numeral and finally if i get 10 i get the x which is again 10 for the that's the roman numeral for 10. so this is our switch statement fairly simple nothing to it so let me show you how to do it with an array so I come over here and I will declare an array now if you don't know what an array is it's basically a variable that holds multiple values and in C++ uh, array is declared um, as follows so I'm gonna do declare a string array called Roman numerals and I will initialize it. In other words, I will populate the values. Now, array has a, you enter, you, uh, you get to each of the, of the values based on the index. Uh, if I have 10 values, I'll have 10 indexes. However, array indexes start from zero. We don't have a number zero. We don't, we don't uh, that's actually our, an error uh, for us because uh, we only supposed to capture numbers 1 through 10. So 0, I will simply 
type zero and kind of ignore it. I won't, I won't be using it. But uh, index number one will be our i, which is the not Roman numeral for one. That's two. And then that's three. And then there's the four. And five. And six. And seven. Eight. Nine. And finally, ten. So, now, when the user enters a number, let's say he enters number four, all I have to do is output the index number four, which will output this, IV, which is Roman numeral for four. If the user enters eight, now index number eight will be output. So, we can directly access these because uh, they correspond with the uh, number that the user will enter. However, in this case, unlike the switch statement, there is no default. We have to check the input, uh, but it's simply a simple if statement. If the number is greater or equal to one and, oh, and the number is less or equal to 10, in other words, it's between 1 and 10, then we have a good input, and then we can simply see out the Roman numerals, and the index, like I said, corresponds with the number, so the index is the number. Now, we are not outputting the number itself, like the user will enter, let's say, user will enter 4, we're not outputting the number four. What we are outputting is the index number four from the array, which is zero, one, two, three, four. So we will output index number four. Number, in this case, holds the value of the index. Else, if, it, if the number is not correct, if the input is wrong, then we can simply see out the same thing. I'll just copy paste it. So you can see that the the result will be the will be the same uh, in both cases, whether we use switch statement or the uh, or the array. So uh, okay, so so um, let me see. I have an error here. No operator matches. Oh, uh, it's expecting a string because I'm using a string. What I forgot to do, of course, is to import the string library. Include string. That uh, should help. Uh, let me see. There you go. So when I build it. and I run it, I should get the same results twice, because once the program will run the uh, switch statement and the other time it will go and run the uh, the array solution. So if I do 8, I do 8, and you can see the result is the same, but except the array, I forgot the, uh, the line break, so I'll do that here. And here, all right, so that should really do it. That should be make the solutions come up with the s exactly the same result in both cases. Let's see. So if I do again eight, there you go, two eights. If I do, let's say, oh no, an error. What happened? There you go. If I do one, I get one. That's correct. If I do uh, 10, I get X twice. That's correct. And let's do some invalid input. Let's say zero. And you can see you get two error messages. And finally, let's say 11. 
and you get two error messages. So you can see that the solutions are different, but the results are the same, and the array is much shorter compared to the uh, you know the switch statement when you have to go and check each case in array. You simply work with the index itself. Alright, so I hope this was helpful. Please like the video if you liked it. Don't forget to share, comment and uh, subscribe of course. And I will see you in the next video. Happy programming!